Hello everyone and welcome to a different style of video. We have the Pro-Am starting tomorrow on March 23rd. That might be surprising because there's no details out there in the internet at all, it feels like. So I'm here to make a video just sort of summarizing what information you need to know, what to expect and, you know, give you a brief overview on some of the teams that are going to be competing. So starting off, the Pro-Am starts at 1 p.m. PST tomorrow on March 23rd. It will start at that time for the next two weekends. Just to explain what the Pro-Am is, it's kind of like a preseason for the Overwatch League. There is no league points involved. There is nothing of that at stake. This is all for $100,000 in prize money. And it's an opportunity for these Overwatch League teams to play against contenders teams in both the North American and EU region. So... The real season will begin on April 27th. And that's when every all the league points are going to happen. In. The contenders teams won't be involved. And we'll have the 13 West uh, our teams versus the 7 East our teams. Uh, but for just this Pro-Am, we will see none of the APAC region. It is going to be the 13 Overwatch League teams playing against 7 contenders teams. There will be 5 contenders teams from the West and North American division. And there will be 2 European contenders uh, teams as well. We'll go through those teams in just a second. But the 13 West our teams plus those seven contenders teams comes together to be 20 teams. Those 20 teams are then being divided into four different groups of five teams. And those five teams will compete against each other in a group stage round robin style of thing. Best of three group stage. And these are the groups right here, if you want a context. So... Group A, Group B, Group C, and Group D. For important context, Group A and B will be playing in the first weekend. They will play all of their matches in the first weekend. Uh, so this weekend just coming up. The second weekend will be Group C and D. And then the third weekend will be the uh, end of the tournament, which will be this Week 3 Single Elimination Tournament. So this is going to all be Single Elimination. There is not going to be you lose, you go down and into the lower bracket. Because there is a group stage, it's just you need to be flawless throughout the rest of the tournament. In the group stage and the round robin, it's going to be best of three. As far as we're assuming, just based on the timings of the schedule they've given us, there's only one hour windows for each match, which means that they would have to be best of three. We're assuming that in the, group, uh, the single elimination in week three, it will all be best of five. At least we hope so. And hopefully the grand finals is a best of seven. But... That those things aren't solidified. And I think this is an important time to sort of say that the information is not really out there right now. Unfortunately, for whatever reason that we are not aware of, there has not been a lot of clarification on how everything is going to be running. We don't know where it's going to be broadcasted. We don't know if it's going to be Twitch or YouTube. For the qualifiers, they broadcast it on Twitch. But, you know, on the website... It used to say Twitch for the Contenders website, but now it says YouTube here for online play on the official Overwatch League schedule, but you can't click on that. There has been no official announcement as of right now. Um, for talent, there has also not been a talent announcement. We don't really know who is working the event because it's it's my life. I can tell you I'll be working the event. Uh, so I will be working throughout the Pro-Am uh, throughout this tournament. And I will also be having some days where I will not be working, where I will be co-streaming on my Twitch channel as well. So if you're on YouTube, but you want to hear me talk about the games from time to time, I will be able to co-stream. I will, at least I'm hoping I'll be able to co-stream. We don't really fucking know what the rules are. Maybe they'll take the rules away from me, but I'm hoping I'll be able to co-stream on the times that I'm not officially working. But we will see, okay? Those details will be announced hopefully before tomorrow when the league starts. But... um. Only time will really tell. So let's talk more then about the tournament as a whole and like the teams that are playing and what we're expecting out of these guys. So first things first, let's talk about the contenders teams that qualified for this tournament. Uh, and then we'll talk about the groups. So I assume we all know these Overwatch League teams. We've been breaking down uh, these rosters for the most part. We haven't really talked about all of them uh, yet, but we've hit the major ones uh, so far. So for the contenders teams, we have Saints, which is one of the uh, favorites coming out of the Western contenders region. Bo, Aya, <laughs> just roll it around on my stream deck. Aya, come here. Hey, I know, I know, I know. Aya's trying to ruin my video. 
Uh, we have Saints, which is probably the best team in the West. They won the North American qualifiers. They have a lot of familiar faces that you should keep an eye out on. Uh, you're not going to be able to see it too well because of my camera. Let me just move this over here for now, and I'll close this, and I'll close this. So, scuff video at, at its finest. Um, so we got King, Tree, Mike, uh, Mikey, False, Vega, Squid, and Cyrus. So, you know, King and Mikey and False were all in the Overwatch League at different times throughout all of last year. Um, Tree is considered to be a young prodigy who is not of age yet. People are saying he's the North American proper who's going to come in and impress everybody. We will have to see. But this team looked very strong in contenders when they played there. We also have Trick Room, which is another good contenders team. Uh, we got Pummy, Boat, Excal, Infected, Anyhow, Magic Maple, Angelic. This will be a strong team. There's a chance that this team makes it out of their group, uh, but they're going to have to make it over some pretty good teams. Redbird, Esports, uh, Esports, Vision, Graph, and Gig, Moving Fish, Sadist, Deco, Renko, Timeless, Wub, which you should know, Zera, Doom, Cuffer, Clear, Neptune, Cal, and Otters. These are, oh, sorry, and Wisp, Rocket, Chopper, Crimson, Bubbles, Grapes, and Yamitra. I'm just butchering all of these names. I hope you guys are aware. Uh, so these are the five North American teams that qualify for the tournament. I think Saints is obviously going to be a very good team. They are Maryville, if you've watched uh, Contenders or Collegiate. Uh, I think Saints is probably the most likely to make it out of their group right now. But I think Trick Room also has an outside chance. From the European region, we have Twisted Minds, which is a Saudi Arabian team that plays very differently. Well, and Slay, uh, that plays very differently. They play a lot of Farah Echo. Same thing with Team Peps, which has, you know, Naga, who you would know, Molfig, Kellex, bunch of European Overwatch League players who have gone back to contenders. Both of these teams have an outside chance. And let's talk about why. Because, so these are the groups, now that we can talk about them. I wonder if I can zoom in a little bit without cutting it off. There we go. So... Group A is going to be San Francisco Shock, Mayhem, Vancouver Titans, Trick Room, and Timeless. So let me talk about who I think are the favorites to make it out of their groups. I Group A should be pretty cut and dry with Florida Mayhem and San Francisco Shock making it out. They are theoretically the favorites. They have great rosters, and I expect them to both be good this year. Unfortunately, though, the rumors are, once again, we don't have full clarification on this yet, is that San Francisco Shock are having visa problems and they will be having to play this tournament from Korea. I don't know how the Overwatch League is going to work that out in terms of how they're going to play on ping, but if they are playing on, you know, 150 plus, 180 plus ping, that puts them at a massive disadvantage. And these teams are good enough, you know, Vancouver, Trick Room, Timeless, they are good enough to be able to push them if they are working at that kind of disadvantage because it also opens the door of how much did the San Francisco Shock team really care about this tournament at the end of the day. So for me, I'm still going to go for the San Francisco Shock and Florida Mayhem, even with the Shock on ping, but there is potential for an upset because of these ping issues and what we expect we did see a leaked scrim of Shock versus Atlanta and Shock playing on high ping looked very poor. It's just scrims. We don't know how to take anything from that, but keep that in mind. So group B, we have Atlanta Rain, London Spitfire, Los Angeles Valiant, Vegas Eternal, and Saints. The Valiant roster was announced. It's pretty much just a North American contenders team. Vegas Eternal has been struggling so far. So we don't expect either of those teams to make it out. Lana Rain is considered the favorites going into this tournament right now. After seeing a leaked scrim, they have been playing incredibly well. I like the style in which they play, and they have so much strength on their roster if you just look at it. They got the Dallas Fuel backline from last year. They got Lip. Stalker looks to be in incredible form. You know, Dong Hack was a great signing. Hawk's a great player. Like, they look to be the favorites going into this tournament right now. We'll see if that actually comes true. The next question that you have to ask is, who is better, the London Spitfire or Saints? And this is actually a pretty big point of contention in sort of the community right now because Saints have a great roster. They look very comfortable. They are not sort of pigeonholed by their roster into any one composition. They've played a little bit of dive. They've played some wrecking ball, but they're also willing to play the brawl. How good are the London Spitfire with the additions? We have seen some leaked scrims from London Spitfire and they look strong. They do. They, they can play the brawl still. We know that's their bread and butter, but they looked good in the Winston meta. Hardy's ball has much improved. So 
I'm still putting my faith in the London Spitfire that they will be able to win this match versus Saints. But this is the match that you need to keep an eye on. For Group B, London Spitfire versus Saints will be the determining factor of who makes it out of this group. Three pounds London into the dust. Hey, that's what everyone keeps saying. I'll believe it when I see it. Group C, Washington Justice, Los Angeles Gladiators, Boston Uprising, Team Wisp, and Team Peps. Um, the Washington Justice is a team that picked up a really unorthodox roster overall, European and Korean players coming together, but we're somewhat excited. The Los Angeles Gladiators have been rumored to be doing very poorly in scrims against multiple different teams, multiple different sources. The Gladiators are supposedly struggling right now and not really living up to the caliber that we would expect from a roster this stacked. So we don't know what to expect from this team and if they're going to be able to make it out of this group. Boston Uprising has a crazy stacked roster in terms of just number of titles that they've won. Have a look at this. Boston Uprising. Look how many trophies they got. Striker's got two. Smurf has two. Birdering has one. Lee J. Gon has one. Iziaki has one. And Twilight has one. These guys are no uh, slouches when it comes to coming playing in big games and just veterans of the Overwatch League as a whole. The big question we have, and we talked about this in our team preview, are they going to be able to compete at that level? Is the team going to synergize? Is the team going to blow up? You know, they have acquired the management of the Washington Justice that have sort of been running that team for the last few years. And we all know how I feel about the Washington Justice in the last few years. So can they also break that curse with the people in charge? Team Peps. Uh, uh, sorry, and Team Peps is coming in. I think they actually have an outside chance. Team Peps plays a very unorthodox style of playing the game. They like to play a lot like Farrah Echo. We know they always love to play their uh, Rhyme Brawls. There is a chance that I think they might catch some of the teams off guard with their unique style of playing. But this is an important thing to note. The two European teams, Twisted Minds and Team Peps, are going to be playing from a LAN facility in, uh, the, uh, in London, I believe it is. So they will have will be having to play on ping. We're hoping that they can get like a minimum, you know, 90 ping. But a big question that I have that hasn't really been answered at this point is if they're playing on 90 ping, are they going to force the opposition teams that they're playing against to also play on a minimum level of ping, right? So if they're playing to East Coast, but there's an East Coast team, they're not going to allow the Overwatch League team to play you know, who plays on the East Coast to play on zero ping or like you know, 20 ping, right? Compared to the European team that will play on around 100. Are they going to artificially inflate everyone's ping who are playing against these European teams to just keep it balanced and fair? They've done that in the past when we played in Hawaii, when we had the APAC team playing in uh, Asia and we had the West playing out of Hawaii. They artificially in uh, increased everybody's ping so it was a level playing field. If that is what happens... I think the Team Peps and Twisted Minds have a massive advantage of these players and teams are used to playing on a higher ping and it might play into their advantage because the Overwatch League teams ha haven't played on that and aren't used to that style. So I'm sure we'll get clearer details on that as we get closer to that date. But for right now, I think the Team Peps, even just without the ping issue, their style is interesting and could catch these guys off guard. So... Who's going to make it out of Group C? I'm putting my money on the Boston Uprising. I think they have a stacked roster. I think they should be able to clear a lot of these other teams. Even though we have no information on how good Boston Uprising currently is on scrims and what to expect from this team. I'm then also going to put my faith in the Los Angeles Gladiators. I think scrim bucks you shouldn't look too much into. I think that the Gladiators are probably trying to diversify and practice a lot of different things other than unique things. But... Their roster is so good that I ho have to believe and hope that when push comes to shove, they will be able to stand up when it matters most. If not, that is a very worrying sign for the Los Angeles Gladiators. So Gladiators and Boston are my picks to be making it out of Group C. Then we go to Group D. We got Toronto Defiant, New York Excelsior, Houston Outlaws, Twisted Minds, and Redbird Esports. Toronto Defiant is obviously the bad boys of the league now. It is the American Tornado roster coming together from all parts of the Overwatch League and creating their own team. I think they are very talented in just all of their players. They have a stacked roster. They have a deep roster that should be able to cover most things. New York Excelsior announced their roster for the first time yesterday. We got a clear look at what it's going to be. 
it's solid. I just have no faith that this management and everything that's going on with this team is going to be able to clear. We saw some New York Excelsior scrims. It didn't look great, if I'm being honest. And I'm getting flashbacks of New York Excelsior last year where on paper, they had a good roster, yet they only ended up going on to win about three matches in the entire year. That This roster screams the same thing. The rumors that they don't have a translator, that they haven't been doing well in scrims, it's hard to get over that. So I don't think New York Excelsior are going to make it out of this group. Houston Outlaws are just absolutely stacked these days. They have six players with the addition of Gargoyle. I've already just talked about in a recent video how good these guys are. They're definitely one of my bets coming out of this group. So Twisted Minds and Redbird Esports. Redbird Esports are, are a good team, but I don't think they're a good enough team to beat a Toronto Defiant or a Houston Outlaws. I think they can beat the New York Excelsior. I think their matches will be competitive, but I'm not sold on this roster being able to get out of it. Esports. I love me some Esports. Twisted Minds. Here's my hot take of the Prime, okay? You got to have one, and I haven't said one yet. I think Twisted Minds will make it out of this group. Here's why. I think that they might make these teams artificially inflate their ping. I think that is going to be difficult for the Toronto Defiant to deal with. And I also believe that Twisted Minds are very strong for their own reasons. And let me make this clear. Toronto Defiant are a better team than Twisted Minds. They are so stacked. But when we're playing a best of three, you only need to win two maps. Twisted Ma Minds plays... Oh my God, my brain is just unable to use these words right now. Twisted Minds plays a very unique way of playing the game. Nutella is very strong at Mercy, and they love to play LBBD on Pharah or Echo. I think they're going to lean into that in this match, play their style, play what you're good at. And a part of me is worried that the Toronto Defiant team is either going to not have a great answer to it because it's very difficult to practice against that type of style if you're not ready for it, or they're going to try and mirror it. And I'm worried that they will get caught out not being able to play at the same level because that style is like you play like Diva Echo, and that's, that's Toronto Defiance bread and butter. They love playing those heroes. I could see them going into this match, trying to ego duel these Twisted Minds players. And if they have to play on ping, it could go either way. It could go either way. So I'm excited to see what is going to come out of this match. But my hot take is that Twisted Minds will take this one over Toronto Defiant and make it out of this group. I could easily be wrong. Toronto could look just incredibly strong. And the style that Team Peps and Twisted Minds just does not work when we get to the Overwatch League level. But we'll have to wait and see. And that's what makes these Pro-Am so exciting is because we're going to finally see the actual battles between these contenders teams and the Overwatch League teams. Who will come out on top? Only time will tell. My favorites to win the whole tournament after we've made it out of these groups is the Houston Outlaws and the Atlanta Reign. We don't know too much about the Outlaws. I think they're going to be very strong, especially if this Winston Lucio Kiriko meta, which we're assuming is going to still be strong, is going to be played a lot. Um, but there are big questions that head into this tournament. Is Brawl going to be effective? A lot of these contenders teams play a lot of Brawl style. Will that work or catch some of these Overwatch League teams off guard? Will the European style with the Echoes and the Farahs catch them off guard? We don't know. We don't know. But it's all to play for um and that's that's the problem in a nutshell all the information you needed to know from the details to the teams that i think you should look out for and the matches that you should keep an eye out it's exciting to be able to get something going on the off season is finally over i'm excited to just talk about things and you know finally get some matches even though this isn't the official overwatch league kicking off and that this prime is not for any league points it's just for money and bragging rights it's still going to be an awesome preseason style of thing. Let me know who you guys think are going to win the whole tournament in the uh, comments below. Hopefully we get information on talent and broadcast and all that type of stuff today so that by the time this video comes out, you'll have all the answers to the things that I did not have the answers to in this video. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys on the broadcast. See you next time.